Hello friends. So in the last class we saw what is Grimm's law, who Grimm is and uh, who was his pre predecessor, that is uh, Rask, the Danish philologist who first pointed out these changes. And then Jacob Grimm, his contribu contribution is that he made it, he arranged it, he saw some regularity and then he made some statements about it. So in the last class we saw that uh, we had the first uh, law and the three correspondences, isn't it? That is dha and dha and gha. We call them proceeds or stops. Since we have got the ha sound accompanying, you say, they are aspirated sound, aspirated. And these aspirated proceeds became aspirated, they are aspirated, aspirated waste proceeds, waste proceeds or stops, you can say stops also. What happened to them? They became, in the Germanic, they became b, d and g, that is waste, waste unaspirated, unaspirated proceeds. We also saw examples Brada, brother, then we saw the Vidhava, yesterday we had it now, so I, I need not repeat it. Vidhava, that is Vido, Bra, and then Ghamsa, Goose. So and we have got three correspondences here. Bha, B, Dha, the Gha, G. This means we have done already. Okay, now we pass on to the next one. Next three correspondences. In the first law, we have taken words from Sanskrit as examples. We are taking Sanskrit and Latin because they belong to the non-Germanic languages and the English belongs to the Germanic language. These things already we have done. Okay. So the second rule is, as we are saying, B, D, G of Indo-European became in the Germanic P, T, Good. That is, these are Indo-European waste, waste stops. What happened to them? They have become unvoiced stops. You can say unvoiced or voiceless. That depends on you. Your style. <laughs> if your style is voiceless, say voiceless. Voiceless. Okay. And then this is waste. Right. So examples we have seen, uh, we are going to see, examples are taken from Latin, known to you, simple lubricus one, lubricus, lubricus means slippery, English word is slippery, so you can see the difference, b and has become p, that is, double p doesn't matter, that is spelling, when you transcribe it, you will only use a single p sound, so, Lubricus, lubricant, you know, oil is a lubricant is. And the next is the, the chum. And you have got ten. The, the, the chum is ten, decade, you know, decade. Now, international decade of women that is declared by UN, 1976, 1985. Ten years, a period of ten years. So, ten. See, instead of the, you have got to tell. You know, I hope you understand why why are we taking examples from English and uh, Latin here? Latin and Sanskrit, they belong to the non-Germanic languages and the English belongs to the Germanic language. Only then you can compare them. This is comparative philology. So you are comparing one language with the another. What happened in one language? The sound here. What happened to that love sound in the other language? So it's comparative, comparative is possible only by taking words. Okay. The next one is K. You have got the uh, agar. Agar. Ekar. Ekar is English. Ekar. Agar means feel. G. Instead of G, you have got the K. See? But it is pronounced as K. Listen. Ekar we said. We don't say Asal. <laughs> you don't say Asal, but we say Ekar. So here another, we have got a set of correspondences. B, 
P, D, T, and G, K. These are waste and these are unwaste. They are all, both sides you will find plosives. Difference is, one side you have got the waste plosives and the other side you have got the unwaste plosives. Understand? Another third one and the last one for us, our given slow is coming to an end, so to say, finish, finish means end. And that is correspondence is the third, that is uh, P, T, K. What are these? Unvoiced, unvoiced stops. Now what happened to this P, T, K? They have become F, T and R, H. This sound here, and, uh, this is, actually this is pronounced, see, G and Z. Suppose you said G and Z, unvoiced. Now here both are voiced. If you say then it will be something like this, guz, guz, guz. But if it is unvoiced, <laughs> that's why books, in books you will find this. Either the symbol is written like X here or ha, ha. Better, I think that we, for us to understand it's better. You, David Crystal, you know, he gives this sound. But some other book you can see this. I'll show you David Crystal, Crystal's book just now, said two or three minutes straight. Yes. So, unvoiced stops became unvoiced, unvoiced fricatives. Fricatives. Or you say aspirates, aspirates. Some people call this. These sounds aspiris, unvoiced fricatives. So that what happens the examples you can see patal, Latin. Patal. That is not you know paternal angle comes from this. Paternal angle and maternal angle, you have got. So pathal is father in English. Pathal is Latin. Pathal. And then you have got the trus. T R E S trus. Third. Third. Spelling is this one, but the sound is this. This is the sound. Third. Tertius means the trust means three or so. Tertius is the ah, so, but the sound is three. Three, three, three. See the three. So the sound is the. You can see the the. The next and the next is kentum. Latin kentum. Kentum means hundred. From there we have got centenary, centurion, a person in charge of hundred persons. An officer in charge of 100 persons, you got centurion. Roman centurions. You remember, uh, if you know, if you know Bible history, you can a centurion went to Jesus Christ. This is a person who is in charge of 10, uh, sorry, 100 soldiers. So it's Kendum. Kendum, and that is 100. 100. So you can see the correspondences here. That is ha here, k here, t here, k here. Per here and for here. That is, this is the. So with this, we can conclude the Grimm's law. Understand? These are the nine correspondences. You have got three laws here, three statements here, and then they have got all the nine correspondences, very regularly illustrated with the examples from non-Germanic languages, that is Latin and Sanskrit and. Uh, Germanic language that is English. It's as simple as that. I hope you understand. Sorry. But please do not be under the impression that this took place overnight. So Monday he went to sleep and then Tuesday, all the Tuesday morning, all the Germanic people started this saying, you know, may they take it years. Maybe centuries, we do not know. But philologists as people, such be philology means love of language. Philia means love. Philosophy means love of wisdom. Philia. Philia means philo. No? Philanthropy. Philanthropy. What does that mean? Phila. Love for humans. Anthropo. Anthropos. Means anthropology. Science of man. Isn't it? So, philanthropy means that is, uh, see this, phi. Philology, phil, philology. That means philia here. Philia. La, Greek it is. Philia means love. You have got many such words. Logos means word. 
means language. Verb means language. So philology means love of language. A person who loves language, studies language, etc., he is a philologist. I like that I study philosophy. Philosophy. Sophie means wisdom. Sophia, wisdom. Love of wisdom is philosophy. Philanthropy. Phi. Philo. Andropos. Andropos means man. See? That is uh, love of man. That is philanthropy. So this. Uh, you know, philanthropist. Mahatma Gandhi was a philanthropist. Then uh, Mother Teresa was a uh, philanthropist. Uh, so that is just to explain that word. Okay. So we don't waste we don't waste much time on that because this is not a class on vocabulary. You know, if you want classes on vocabulary. Now I will I'll show you a book. If it is available in your library, you can go through this. You see, this is the book. Can you see this? That is the Cambridge Encyclopedia Language Second Edition, David Crystal. He's supposed to be an authority. Can you see this? I think you can see this. Yes. Cambridge Encyclopedia Language Second Edition. Now here, if you have it in your library, you can go. Here you see you have a page 330. See here. La the title is Language Change. Can you see? Language Change. Yeah. And here, one, two, three. Third column, page 330, you can see some circles, three circles are drawn there, can you see? Three circles, see here, somewhere here, here, you can find three circles. Now, according to David Crystal, he says that what is important is the circular relationship between the correspondences. And he gives that diagram here, and I will I will just draw it on the board. Just for, just for your further reading, or if you want to know more about these things, you know, we can see this. This is the book, and this is the page. Three, three twenty-nine. Uh, sorry, three thirty, three thirty and three thirty-one. Three three zero and three three one. You can see that, and the circular motion. That is that the diagram. That is what he has given here is I will show you what has he given. Then he says that the circular, you know, there is a circular relationship. And he says he does like this. And see ba. First one is ba. Okay. What happens to ba? First, first circle. Or first relation. First relation is Sometimes you might not get space there. So in that book you can see on page 330 you find this ba. That just become first what? B. Isn't it? And then what is the next circle? Third uh, relationship. B has become pa, b and it has just become um pa. Isn't it? Pa has become ba, and ba has become pa, and then you come here f. So this is this is the circular relationship. Sir. Pa ba pa f, and this is this is very important. I showed you that book. So the circular relationship between correspondences. So this is circular relationship between correspondences. That is. That is its major feature. Its major feature is Grimm's philosophy. Now, if you put it like this, you can see uh, ba that has become first is b, and b that has become p, and p that has become f. That is the final product. In between, we have s. You can see the circular relationship. All right. The next one, of course, it is like this. It says. Uh, dha, send it. So what happens to dha here? Dha, you have first it will become the, and then it will become 
T and then it will become T that is Send it T, B, T B, B, T, B Send it Send it So you can see like this This uh, The has become the The has become The T and T has become T Right? Send it, T has become T Now the third one is in your answer book, you know, if suppose you are answering a question on Grimm's law, you can draw this diagram. That is it's an authority, you know. The crystal is an authority. And the next one is, of course, you have got the ga. Okay. First it becomes ga, and then it becomes ga becomes what? Ga becomes ka, isn't it? Yes, ka, ka. And then this becomes ha. Look at that. So this is how the circular. You can do it in a much better way because for one thing I am not. A, <laughs> I don't know much about drawing. I'm very weak in that. So I can be the space also. And if you have got a canvas or something, that you can, you can very very well do it. Show it in your answer book. And then you can write this quotation like this. You can say, what is it? Uh, the circular relationship. Between correspondences is its major feature. It means Grimm's law's major feature. So, yes. so the third one you can say that is G has become G, G has become K, G has become K as and K has become H as Kingdom under this is. So this is. With this we come to the end of Grimm's law. I think it is clear to you. If you have time enough, and if you are interested in this, then of course you can draw this diagram also in your answer book. Not only that, you get clear picture now, how that uh, <laughs> is uh, evolving like this, changing. Huh? I think it is. Hope you have understood it. If you are, if I have made a mistake, you should point point that out because you know it is a da da ga etc. The possibility of making mistakes, and uh, if I have made mistakes, definitely you can point that out. All right. So I hope that you have followed me. You have enjoyed this class very much, and then uh, it will be good if you understood it. It's a great uh, pleasure for me, and also a pleasure for you. Uh, with this optimistic note. For the time being, let me say goodbye. Bye. Tomorrow we will see Karl Werner's Werner's law. Tomorrow next class. What is Werner's law? Werner's law. If you don't know Grimm's law, you cannot understand the Werner's law. So I give you 24 hours for you to go through this and make a thorough study of this. The three statements and nine correspondences and how is it in the circular relationship that is. Uh, shown by David Crystal, etc. I think that you got some idea. About change, you know, in some people I tell you, there is just one more example is this. Some people say, you know, that thing that you eat, huh? it's called booty. Some people say booty, isn't it? Booty, 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 yes. So some people write it like this, booty. Some people uh, pronounce it as a eh? Puri. See this? Puri. So then you can say, where the, some people have B, some other people have B. Just to show you the correspondence. Suppose I have had South Indians pronouncing this as a Puri. But North Indians, I was in North India for many years. In fact, I had my education and everything in Indo. You know, you, you know Indo city. I was a student of Indore Christian College, Indore, yes. So I have both the South and North. And then, uh, well, I was there about, about 10 years in Madhya Pradesh, in the Indore city. Indore city is my city. So, Buri. So there they say Buri, but here in North South India they will say Puri. So you can make a law. What is the law? That is, wherever the North Indians use in North India, Wherever in North Indian people use B, in this particular world, South Indian people use P. 
I can say, if you want, you can make it over like that, but I don't know whether it will stand the test or not, okay. So, bye. Have a nice day.